Hello, I'm Kristen, and this is Kristen Craze Books. So, I was looking at my shelves. They're getting really full. As you know, I've said it many times that the books behind me are my favorites. So, I do have books scattered around my room, around my house, in storage that are on my TBR, that aren't on my TBR cards, or that I've read and just didn't make it to these shelves. I don't know why I'm keeping them, why I'm storing them in boxes. There's some in there that I still want to keep for whatever reason but there are a few that I'm ready to let go of so I wanted to go through those today. So some I have read, some I haven't and I'll start with the ones that I haven't read because it's a smaller pile, pile. And the first two I actually talked about in my last video, a try a chapter tag where I decided whether I wanted to keep the books on my shelves or not and these are the two that I decided to get rid of so I'll just tell you about them briefly. The first one is Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. This is a YA contemporary romance. And then the other one is The Farm by Joanne Ramos, and this is a feminist dystopian novel. They liked the writing in this a lot, but it just, the premise wasn't for me. And then I have three more that I have not read. And the first one is The On the Offbeat by Becky Abertali. And I've only ever read Simon and the Hobie and Sabian's Agenda by her, and I think that's probably the only one I will read. I liked it well enough, but I liked Leah as a character in that, and then so I was excited to get this companion novel. Then this came out, I'd already bought it, but all the reviews started to come in and nobody seemed to like it. It seemed like um, Leah's character changed in this and she wasn't as likable. So I just never picked it up and I just have never had the motivation to pick it up. So I'll be happy to pass this on to somebody who is gonna really enjoy it. The next one I have is actually an arc, which is really nice, but I just have never gotten to it and I don't think I will. This is a group by Christy Tate and it's being compared to Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, which is a book I love and I find I recommend that book to people more than any other book that I've read, but I don't need to read something similar. To me, that book is perfect for a book like that. And then I remember there were some discussions about some problems people had with this book when it first came out, so I just don't see myself making it a priority. And the next one was actually a gift, and I just don't see myself picking it up, and that is Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner, which has an adorable cover, really summery read. I do like to read books like this by the pool or on the beach, but this one just doesn't appeal to me, I think. I know somebody who is going to love this, and I'll be happy to pass this one on to them. So those are the ones that I haven't read that I don't know much about. But now I have a stack here of ones I have read and I'm just ready to part ways from. Some of them were not my favorites. These are not all bad books. Just not ones that I feel like I want to put on the shelves behind me. So I don't know why I'm keeping them. And this is one that was popular years ago. And it's Wolf by Wolf. And this is by Ryan Grodin. And I like speculative fiction. And it's an interesting premise. But I have realized there's like a competition in here, as you can see the person's on the motorcycle and it's a race. And I've just realized I'm not into race stories. I don't like road trips, anything where it's people in cars on a journey. It just does not work for me. I did think the writing was interesting. I know that there's another book in this duology, but just not, I gave it three stars. It wasn't a bad book, just not a book that stayed with me or one that I'd ever see myself recommending. So I don't need to keep it. And then I have three of Jojo Moya's books and actually one of these I haven't read so I'll just show you that one. I got this one at Valley Village for a good price and that's The Girl You Left Behind. I don't hear anybody talk about this, know nothing about it, but I'm gonna let that one go. Paris for One is short stories, not very memorable. I remember re breezing through this because it's a short book but I don't remember a single story in here. And then of course I have Me Before You which is a book that I loved at the time but I have now realized the issues with it. And I know a lot of people love this author. It's just these are not books that I need on my shelves and I know somebody who I can give this to and they will appreciate them. They are they do look great together, but I can pass those on. I've had them in storage, so I don't know why I was keeping them. And the next one is kind of an interesting one. It is Bachelor Nation. This is by Amy Kaufman. And there was a time where I was really, really into The Bachelor, but I haven't watched it in years and years. And I remember reading this at the time thinking I was going to get a lot of juicy gossip, a lot of behind the scenes information, but really nothing in here was anything I didn't already know by following these people on Instagram and watching the show. So wasn't a huge fan of this book to begin with and I don't watch the show anymore, so I don't need this. This one kind of makes me sad because it's one of my favorite authors. 
but I just did not like this book. And that is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. You will see many of his books on my shelves behind me, but this one just didn't work for me. And I think the problem is so many people have done time travel books that it's hard to do them, not well, but you make them unique or be original. I just didn't think there was anything special about this. I didn't care about the characters. I thought the main character interacting with historical figures like Shakespeare and stuff was interesting, but nothing special about this one and not Matt Haig's best. If you're going to read Matt Haig, I highly recommend his nonfiction and then The Humans by him and of course The Midnight Library, which blew up last year deservedly so, but I would skip this one. Next we have a book I feel like is on everybody's shelves because everybody read this when it came first came out and that is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold and this story broke my heart at the time. It's one that I haven't read in probably 15 years. When did this even come out? But it's not one I would reread. I remember the story very well. It's devastating, heartbreaking, but not, it's like a good book, but not one that I feel like I need to keep. And the last one, I'm surprised I still have this because I've already donated all of her other books. I think I was keeping it just because of the gorgeous cover. And that is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. And I've just realized she's not the author for me. I've read Eleanor and Park, which has many issues. I've read Fangirl, which I thought was okay. And then I've read this, which I really did not like. I don't know why I didn't like this. Maybe I read it at a time when I wasn't a huge fantasy reader. And I'm not sure, like it just didn't connect with the characters, didn't care about the story, wasn't invested in this at all. And I'm gonna be honest, this was a cover buy. This is gonna be one of the greatest covers, but I can't keep it for the cover because I've donated everything by this author. I won't continue with this series, didn't like the book. So I have to learn to just move on. So that is it for my unhaul. As you see, there's not a ton here because I'm pretty good about getting rid of books when I don't want to read them or when I read them and didn't absolutely love them. There are a few more I could probably get rid of, but I'm still thinking about it. I might do another one of those try chapter tags because I thought that was really, really helpful with the five books that I did in my last video. But that is it for now. Let me know if you go through your shelves and do a lot of unhauls often because it's really a cathartic experience for me. I'm really happy with having my shelves curated in this way. And I thank you again for your time. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.